Hello, hello, hello. I have an update for the METAR Raspi, the METAR weather reporting uh, display for the Raspberry Pi. I've made a couple of improvements over the last month. Let's start by talking about the plate. Uh, I fixed a huge bug that primarily affected Class D airports and other airports that have towers that close overnight. Uh, it used to be that if the most recent weather data was not within the last six hours, it would send you to the station selection screen. Uh, this has been fixed. If the program has already been running, it will continue to show the most recent data until it can uh, pick up more data. Uh, the problem is going to be, if you are just starting off, you're going to have to pick, uh, cho uh, choose a different station. Uh, AviationWeather.gov, where I'm pulling the information from, overhauled their METAR uh, discovery uh, service and the web page that gets sent back is identical whether you got uh, an invalid station or if there was just no weather so there's nothing I can really do about that uh, the other big improvement here has been with the uh, the METAR logging uh, the data I made I went ahead and made everything print statements and uh, the Logging is just going to be you done using Bash redirect. Uh, it is much e it is a much simpler system, uh, so, and you have uh, more fine control over where that output file is. So you don't have to be searching for it, and it is much more reliable in that it will actually be pr uh, be printed out somewhere. However, this is not the biggest improvement in this update. That, my friends, is over on the Model B over here. Yes, the METAR RASP Pi now has support for the Adafruit Pi TFT touchscreen display. Uh, so rather than being limited to five buttons, I have buttons everywhere I want them to be. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Uh, we're going to pull up the station identifier for College Station in uh, Texas, which is going through a little bit of rough weather right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fetch it. They are under IFR conditions and stormy weather. Uh, but let's go through and talk about each one of these. So we have the station identifier, the day and time of issuance Zulu, the weather conditions, which is IFR. We have a visual and numeric uh, representation of the wind direction, the wind speed, and if there are any gusts. And this here is a box saying that there is more weather and uh, remarks. I'll get to that a little bit later. We also have temperature, the uh, deviation from standard temperature, which is minus one, the dew point, the humidity, which is calculated, uh, the altimeter settings, and the visibility. Now over on the right hand side, we have a visual representation of the cloud layers that are reported in the METAR. So here we have uh, a cloud layer that is broken at 600 feet, broken at 5,000 feet, and overcast at 7,000 feet. The top of the graph here defaults to 8,000 feet. However, if the cloud layer, if the topmost cloud layer on the METAR report is higher, that becomes the highest and all of the other uh, cloud layers below it are moved accordingly. Now, coming over here to our box, we have two buttons on the primary primary display here. First is this weather remark or weather remark button, depending on if there is more weather or if, and if the METAR came with a remark section. So we'll go ahead and press that. And we see that there is rain and mist and uh, the remark section below. Uh, the remarks are not translated, however, the other weather is. Uh, every, uh, every other weather code is taken into account and will, uh, supports things like heavy rain and combined uh, weather statements. So it will, uh, it will be able to translate things like heavy thunderstorm rain or, or vicinity funnel cloud, uh, things of that nature. So to exit out, we go ahead and uh, press this uh, exit button here, 
And the other button that we have is settings. This brings up the menu uh, where we have cancel. We can go back, uh, exit the menu, S the station selection screen. We have our power option here, brightness and information. Let's just start, uh, let's go uh, right to left here. Information is where you can contact me is where, and where you can download the code on GitHub. Our brightness setting here goes between light and dark. It, all the colors stay the same. It, however, it goes and flips the white and black so you can have a daytime and a nighttime mode. We have power, which uh, you can either exit the program or you can uh, have it shut down. That is a boolean in the program. So you can have it either exit if you are calling it up from the terminal or you can have it go, uh, go ahead and shut down if you are launching it at startup. So let's go ahead and cancel out of that. We have our station selection, which goes back here. And uh, unlike the other program, uh, we can go ahead and either select or cancel. And if you cancel out at uh, upon first the station selection on first boot, it will ask you if you want to either exit or shut down uh, because there's nothing to cancel yet. And of course, the cancel button. Now, uh, included with the other programs, we have an icon section, which is mostly this thermometer gauge here, which goes up and down depending on the temperature. We, and includes uh, the white on black and black on white. Uh, also included is a font. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is pretty limited on its fonts. It usually uh, the stock Raspbian only has three, and they're not full, uh, not, none of them are full Unicode or at least the, uh, the symbols that I want to use. So also I have included the Deja Vu Sans Unicode script. And uh, with the exception of the thermometer icon, all of the other icons, including these uh, gear, the moon, and these arrows, the check marks, everything is Unicode and is included in that font. So that is what I have for you. I've been working pretty hard on this, and I will continue to work on it. As we all know, uh, METARs are not exactly the most standard things, though they do try. So look, uh, look for continued parsing improvements as well as layout improvements and bug fixes as we go along. Uh, but uh, that's what I have for you. I'm sure younger pilots are going to be much more interested in something that is translated as opposed to uh, raw. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that is what I have. Hope to see you down there, down the line with further improvements. Thank you for watching.